hello so buddies you're welcome back to my youtube channel in this video i'll be teaching you how to make an ankara beaded jacket if this is your first time here hi hi my name is joy and i'll be your tutor for this tutorial to my returning viewers i just want to say thank you to my returning subscribers thank you so much for your support and encouragement it means the world to me please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already as i bring you educational sewing videos every week let's get right into this tutorial so materials for these tutorials are your fabric your lining here i'm using a dull face satin your pattern paper your interfacing i'm using two types of interfacing one for the lining and one for the fabric you also need your bias binding your french curve your thread you need your tape measure of course your scissors your tailor's chalk and of course your beads here yeah, i'm using three colors of beads you just want to work with the colors available on your fabric i'm using these broken beads and also a sand bead we also be needing a beading needle here is our measurement of full length half length shoulder bust waist hip around arm a sleeve length and around elbow these are the measurements you'll be using for this tutorial the first thing you want to do is outline or label the areas of interest here as you can see i've labeled the shoulder line horizontal measurement and my center front which is the vertical then you start with your horizontal measurement first along the vertical lines so here as you can see i'm marking my full length which is 24 inches remember to always mark on two sides so that you can get a straight line so there as you can see i'm labeling it full length 24 inches the next thing you want to do is to measure your half length yeah my half length is 18 inches so of course i'm marking on two lines or i'm marking in two places so that i get a straight line so that's my half length so the next thing you want to do is take your shoulder measurements yeah shoulder divided by by two which is 8.5 my shoulder is 17 so you just want to mark your shoulder then the next thing i'm going to do is take um i'm going to do my armhole measurements now this is the calculation you want to use for your armhole measurement bus divided by six plus 1.5 which is going to give us an 8 inches so you want to mark that calculation as your chest line so usually the chest line and the armhole measurement goes hand in hand so that this calculation now is what you use for your armhole that's the armhole opening or armhole measurement whatever you want to call it so after you've done that you want to come down by one inch for your shoulder slope for my neck depth, I'm using a 3.75 measurement and for my neck width, I'm using 2.75 measurements. So you want to connect these two ends with your French curve like so and then you draw down your shoulder slope. One thing I want you to understand is that for jacket, you want to use a wider shoulder so that it gives you that shoulder pad effect. So after that, what I did here basically was come in by... 0.5 in on the middle of my armhole length so for that armhole length you find the midpoint and then you come in by 0.5 inches so that's what i did basically to get my armhole measurement then you link it up so for my shoulder to bust, this is one measurement i didn't include shoulder to bust point because i'll be needing it for my armhole that so yeah should up to bust point 11 inches of course i'm marking in two places so that i get a straight line as usual that's a rule you know then after that you want to do this particular calculation bust divided by four will give me 9.75 that 
that's 39 divided by 4 which is 9.75 then same thing you do the same thing for the waist waist is 30 divided by 4 which is 7.5 and that's the same thing i'm doing so i'm marking my 7.5 and then i'm adding one inch for my that allowance remember there's going to be a that on these clothes now for my full length the horizontal measurement i'm taking there is my hip which is 42 divided by 4 which is 10.5 so all you want to do next is to link up you link the bust that cal those calculations you've taken you just link the three of them together with a straight line first before going in with your french curve to true so true is just blending in the lines so that they are not so sharp and then you use your french curve you know working with this french curve is actually an art you have to learn it to work with your french curve to get the right um lines or the right shapes you want so for the boss i'm just going to extend the line to the armhole and there you have our outline outer shape or outer line so the next measurement we need sorry i keep on forgetting this measurement is the bust to bust point for this um jacket the bust to bust point is 8.5 it's a horizontal measurement so we are going to be dividing into two 8.5 divided by two is 4.25 so you want to take it on the bust line the waistline and the full full length that's the hip line on the bust line the half length and the full length to get a straight line this is the line where your dart will go through now remember i took a one inch extra allowance for the dart at the waistline so that's what we are actually going to be taking half inch on both sides of that line we just drew now and then you link it to the hip and to the bust like so now for the armhole what we want to do is like an armhole dart but this is just like a flat um, sewing it's not going to have any bust protruding stuff so you link it to the armhole the midpoint of the armhole and then you give you extend it by 0 0.75 inches why because when you are sewing it on your fabric there tends to be a shortage on the smaller piece of this jacket so the next thing we want to do is to draft out our um boss that remember the front half length and the back half length should not be the same why because of the bust the bust in front adds to the measurement of the front so what i'm doing basically is to draw out my excess two inches like so this part is going to be cut out that's my bust that and then i'm going to measure out one inch on the hem part because i don't want to have a sharp corner so you just want it to be like a curve so it goes smoothly when you're joining it, it goes smoothly with the back piece so yeah i'm done with my front pattern and i'll just label it and keep it aside now for this jacket remember the style line is going to be a curved a, a curved um, hem at the the front opening so that's basically what i've done there with my french curve i just curved it linked it to the hem and to the center front and there you have it so now let's get to the back to the back um, pattern the back half length here is 18 minus 1.5 which is 16.5 so just like we did with the front piece we're going to be leveling the shoulder line and the center back and then we start with our horizontal measurements this is my half length which is 16.5 marking in two places so that i get a straight line and then remember the full length will now be 22.5 as against 14 point and um, as against 24 inches in front because of the reduction in 1.5 inches so the back half the back full length will now be reduced by 1.5 inches so yeah i've ruled out my full length horizontal measurement of the full length and then the half length 
so the next thing we are going to be doing is our shoulder line remember the shoulder is 17 inches mark it in two places and then for our armhole we are going to be doing the same thing we did in front which is our bust measurement divided by six inches to give us our armhole line remember what like the same thing we did in front is what we are going to be doing at the back remember our width is two points our neck width is 2.75 and then the neck depth for the back is one inch so with our french curve going with our french curve i'm going to take that then of course our depth is one our shoulder slope sorry shoulder slope measurement is one inch and then you just rule it like so now for the back armhole you don't want to come in by 0.5 at all what you want to do basically is to follow the line the straight line with your french cuff and just draw your armhole why because our back width that's across your back is quite broad broader than the front width so at the center back you want to come in by 0.75 at the waistline why because of the natural curvature of the back you don't want to just have a straight center back you want to come in by 0.75 at the waist and then you just link it from that the part where you entered in you just link it to the full length and also to the um shoulder line that's the top of your um paper so now we are going to be doing the same thing we did in front to the back waist divided by four plus one to the back then you take your shoulder to bust point which is 11 in my case and then you draw for your bust line then the next thing you want to do is your bust measurement we've already done all these calculations in front so you're going to be replicating you're going to be doing the same thing the only difference between the front and the back is that you're not going to be having a side or a bust that the back is not going to have a bust that you're just going to be doing the same thing without the bust that and then the, for the back center back you're going to be going in by 0.75 at the waistline so that you don't just have a straight back you have a back that flows with the natural curvature of your um, back so the same thing we did in front is what we are basically going to be doing at the back your bust to bust line is 4.25 so you want to take the same thing that's we are trying to create the channel for our darts now you link it up to the full length line the half length and then the bust up to the chest line remember we took our dart allowance which is one inch so we are sharing it equally on both sides of the line 0 0.5 0 0.5 and then you just go ahead and do the same thing you did in front in this case you're going to take it up to the chest line that's the chest line right there the bust line as you can see this is the waistline and then this is the full length which is also our hip line so the next thing you want to do is find the midpoint of the armhole where you'll be linking that that to end so with your french curve you just want to link it to the armhole there are many curves on this french curve so you just find out which one works perfectly for what you're trying to do so you see here uh, the back pattern of this jacket is ready the last thing you want to do as quality control is to measure your side the side of this pattern the side line for the back and also the front remember the front you're going to be eliminating the 1.5 at the bust area so you want to measure it minus that 1.5 and then to make sure it matches if it doesn't then you have to go back and troubleshoot and know what the, where the problem is coming from so in this my own case you can see that the back and the front is equal so i'm just going to go ahead and cut out my patterns like so
so yeah what you want to do basically is to close up you can slash like so and then close up with the masking tape or you can use a pin depending on what you have available or you can just gum it seal it with a gum here i'm using the masking tape I'm just going to close up that pattern and then you trim off the excess right there I'm cutting the back pattern yeah I'm cutting the back pattern always remember to label your pieces so that you don't mix them up together because after cutting they tend to look alike but with very little difference i'm talking about the front and the back pattern so you always want to you know label it so that you know which is which before going ahead to cut on your fabric so the next step of this tutorial is is me cutting on to the fabric the lining and the interfacing so just a quick one yeah i'm trying to reduce i'm trying to reduce the excess um fabric on my armhole by just creating extra that or by just trimming off the extra or the excess that on my armhole the implication of this is if you don't do this the implication is that you're just going to have excess fabric around your armhole the, the armhole will not um, lie smoothly so if you if you want to eliminate any excess fabric on your armhole if you've always noticed on some people's jackets when they wear it it doesn't fit smoothly it has this excess um fabric so that's just what i did there to eliminate the excess so that when i am done sewing it just fit smoothly see i'm doing the pattern for the sleeve i've drawn the full length of the sleeve now the cap height is four inches you mark it on two places so that you get a straight line now my run round elbow is 11 inches so you divide by two which is 5.5 and then from the sleeve cap you just come down by two inches mark in two places like so and then you measure your round arm which in my own case is 12 inch you just want to link that's 12 inch divided by 2 which is 6 so you link your elbow round elbow to your round arm now above your sleeve cap you just measure 3 inches 3 inches horizontally so you measure your front or back pattern you measure the armhole of your front or back pattern in my own case it gave me an 8.5 so what i'm doing basically here with my tape measure is from that center center of the of my sleeve i'm measuring taking my tape measuring 8.5 wherever my 8.5 meets at my sleeve cap that is where i'm going to be marking so at this line here what you want to do is find the midpoint when you find the midpoint of that line that links to your three inches horizontal measurement you now with your hand or with a french curve you curve it like so then after you've done that you now link you now link that's your round arm up to the level of the sleeve sleeve curve And there you have your sleeve now this sleeve is on fold this is just half part of the sleeve
so yeah this is my fabric i'm just going to go ahead and trace i've pinned all my pattern pieces on my fabric and i'm going to be using half inch seam allowances for all the inner joinings and then one inch for my side seams one inch for my side seams and half inch for my dart allowance any inner joining like that anything i'm going to be doing inside my jacket like that i'll be using half inches but for my side seams i'm going to be using one inch for my full length the extra seam i'm going to be using is half inch and is indicated in this video So what I'm doing basically here is trying to trace out my sleeve. So I'm cutting, I'm folding my fabric into four. Then I place my sleeve. This is going to be on fold. And then pin up and add my necessary allowances. My side allowance is going to be one inch while the cap allowance, that's the allowance for the upper part of the sleeve is going to be half inch. And then the allowance on the hem is also going to be half inch. So the next thing you want to do is trace out your lining like i said i'm using a dull faced bridal satin as my lining well because i want it to be very thick and rich i want it to have this you know this weighty feel i don't want a light jacket i want something heavy and thick so you might if you want to achieve something like that then consider using a dull faced bridal satin so yeah what i'm doing basically is just tracing it out you're going to have to trace this exact same thing you did on the fabric for the doll face
So just a quick one on the kind of interfacings I'm going to be using for this tutorial. I'm using two types of interfacing, two different types of interfacing. One is going to be fused on the fabric and the second one is going to be fused on the lining. Now the one I'm going to be using for the fabric is actually um, a non woven interfacing and it's called cloth gum in my area. It's called cloth gum and then the the one i'm using on the lining is actually paper like we call it soft gum stay or soft paper stay they call it paper stay in my area they are all different types of interfacing but they are both non-woven interfacing non-woven fusible interfacing and that's what i'm going to be using so the cloth gum the soft cloth gum or the cloth gum sorry is what i'm going to be using for my fabric while the paper gum or paper stay as it's being called in my area is what i'm going to be using for the lining mind you i'm not going to be um putting any interfacing on the lining of my sleeve personal preference you can actually put yours depending on where you are if your weather is cold you can go ahead and put your interfacing on your um, the lining of your sleeve to make it actually makes it thicker but personally i'm just going to um i'm not going to put any interfacing on the lining of my sleeve i'm just going to be lining my body the body and then the fabric of the sleeve i'm not going to be lining i'm not going to be um, putting any interfacing on the lining of the sleeve so for this tutorial i'm going to be making a part two of this tutorial the part two is just going to be about the stitching and the beading of this jacket i want it to be a very comprehensive tutorial i don't want to rush through things that's why i've taken my time to show you everything i did inside so i'm going to be seeing you in the part two bye